estate has its own secret language and I am doing an entire series of videos on that secret language. There's a series related to home buying and a series related to home selling. This video is video number two in the series of the secret language of real estate, specifically related to home buying, specifically related to the process in that of making an offer. So what is the secret language related to home buying when you are making an offer to purchase a house? That's what we're talking about today and we're starting right now. I'm Sherri Ann Green with Coldwell Banker. Welcome to my YouTube channel that guides home sellers and home buyers in Washington, D.C. and Northern Virginia. Let's start with the EMD. The EMD is the earnest money deposit and it is your good faith cash deposit put down at the beginning of an offer, at the beginning of your ratified contract. It is the amount of money that you are willing to lose if you do not follow the contract terms to the letter. It is the amount of money the seller can keep if you wind up in breach of contract for not following the rules of the contract to the letter. The EMD is not an additional fee or an additional closing cost. It comes off your balance on the settlement sheet. It comes off your balance on closing day. It is simply that initial deposit that you're putting down on the house and it's the amount of money the seller can keep if you wind up in breach of contract. A mortgage, you probably know what a mortgage is, but in case not, a mortgage is the loan that you would obtain to purchase a home. Well, a mortgage is how you finance a house. Now, you can pay cash for a home, but if you need to finance your purchase, if you need a bank to lend you the money to purchase a house, you get what is called a mortgage. As part of that mortgage, you will probably have a down payment. If you're doing a conventional loan, most people put down 20%. However, there are products that allow you to put down 15, 10, even three and a half percent with FHA. And if you're using a Veterans Administration loan, you don't have to put anything down at all. So talk through the options with your lender to see how much of a down payment you will make on your mortgage, on the purchase of your home. That down payment is your payment of cash. The mortgage finances the rest. So when you find the house that you love, you write an offer and an offer becomes your contract. So the first thing you need to know about anything in real estate is nothing is agreed to unless it's in writing and signed by both parties. Handshakes, verbal discussions, they don't count. Everything has to be in writing and that's why we write an offer. And that offer, when it gets accepted by the seller, whether right away or back and forth through negotiations the two of you have, when it gets ratified, our next secret word, then you have a contract. So a ratified offer is a contract and that is your contract to purchase the house. That is the contract you follow every step of the way, all the timelines, all the deadlines, and so does the seller. So an offer to purchase becomes a contract. So where does your offer go? When you write it with your buyer's agent, which we've talked about, it gets presented to the seller's agent or the listing agent. So in a real estate transaction, most of the time, there is an agent representing both sides of the transaction. There's a buyer's agent representing the buyer and there's a seller's agent, or you might hear them called a listing agent, who works with the seller. So your offer gets presented from your buyer's agent to the listing agent and the listing agent presents that to the seller. You can think of it sort of as a legal transaction when there are attorneys representing both sides. It's the same thing in real estate. There are two agents representing different sides of the transaction and they come together and work together on behalf of their client, the buyer, and their client, the seller. A pre-approval letter, that's the letter from your lender that says we've discussed them getting a mortgage and I've seen their credit score, debt to income ratio, seen their W-2s and a whole lot of other financial information. And that financial information is telling me as the lender that they are pre-approved to have a mortgage in this amount. That pre-approval letter goes along with your offer and becomes part of your contract. What else is a part of your contract? Disclosures, and those come from the seller. Now. 
disclosures are different in every jurisdiction. So you'll want to ask your agent in your area, what is customary for me to receive as a buyer when it comes to disclosures from the seller? In Virginia, they're very limited. In DC, they're much more detailed. Disclosures can outline everything from lead paint, which is federally mandated, so you will get a lead paint disclosure if you're due one, no matter your jurisdiction. But it can be even more detailed to tell you the age of systems, the age of the roof, if they've ever had flooding or fire damage. Check with your local jurisdiction, check with your agent, and see what kind of disclosures you will be given. That will give you an indication of what kind of additional due diligence, additional home inspections you should do before you purchase the property. So we've talked about a buyer's agent, we've talked about a seller's agent, and there are two other things in that category I want us to talk about too, two other terms. One is designated agent or agency, and the other is dual agent. So designated agent or agency is when there is one brokerage handling the listing, handling the house for sale, and the same brokerage has another agent who comes along as the buyer's agent. So let's use Coldwell Banker in this example. So Coldwell Banker has a listing for a house for sale at 123 Main Street, and a buyer comes along with a Coldwell Banker buyer's agent, and they write the offer and go under contract. So the house is under the Coldwell Banker brokerage as a listing, and it has a designated agent for the seller and a designated agent for the buyer. That is designated agent or, de de or designated agency. Now, dual agency is when one realtor, one agent, represents both sides of the transaction. They are dual in their representation. Some jurisdictions do not allow this, some do. Most jurisdictions require that both parties sign off on that dual representation. Most people want their own agent, representing just their interest in the transaction. When it comes to being a dual agent, you are basically sitting in the middle and mediating between the two. A dual agent can't share confidential information and can't really do more than just weave the two of you through the process as gingerly as possible. Having your own agent can give you a little more insight into what might be happening from the other side of the transaction. But for these purposes, a dual agent represents both sides of the transaction in the real estate process. These are just a few of the secret terms of real estate that we're going to talk about in this whole series. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video. While you're here, watch this one next. I think you'll find it helpful too.